Welcome to the show. My name is Kat. I'm Catlin. And we're here every week talking watches, photography, adventure, and exploring the world of horology. So we have an exciting show for you guys today. We're going to do another watch review. Yay. It's been I, a little bit. It ha- what was our last watch review? I think the brew. Oh, yeah. It has been a while. Yeah. We've been busy. We have been Man. busy. No excuses. Get back to it. Get we're back, back to, to it, the grind. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm excited about this one. So this is our second, not technically our third Oris watch that we've reviewed. Yeah, because we did the pointer date. Mm-hmm. We did the Aquas, yep. which we both now own. <laughs> Y'all, we failed. <laughs> we failed. We failed so hard. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we, the lack of self-control is a real problem for us. It is. Honestly. Like, bless our bank We, fell, our we fell in love. And someone, was it Watches and Whiskey? They were saying how it's like... Um, when you get a foster pet and you don't want to send the foster pet back, like you fall in love with the foster pet. This is pet. why I don't foster pets. My no. mom fosters so, so, cats. So stop sending was... us watches? No, don't. I mean, let's not be dramatic. <laughs> but this is why I don't foster. Like yeah. my, mom, my mom fosters and she's always like, oh, here's this little kitten. No, mom. Yeah. Because then I'm going to wind up being a crazy cat lady. No, no cats for me. <laughs> We've had this conversation. I know. We got into it real if deep. you guys could see like how much cat's eyes roll when we talk about cats it's ridiculous no um all right no cats but we have watches we have watches we have watches so today the oris diver 65 but not just any version of the diver 65 no this is a really neat limited edition piece that was done in uh to that last year i think Mm -hmm. um from uh it was a partnership with oris and the timeless luxury store yeah ever in texas yeah, Very so we're excited. yeah we are super excited. Okay, so just a little bit of history about Oris. If you guys haven't, go back and listen to episode fifty five of our podcast where we interviewed VJ Geronimo, the Oris CEO of North America. Yes, um, it's just a great conversation. Great guy. Obviously, we're fans of the brand and um, a little bit more informative. We're not going to get into the history too deep here, but so the Oris Diver sixty five has been around for over fifty years, right. and I think if you go on their website right now, there's over fifty models of the diver 65 right well it was reintroduced in 2015 and it was i remember it being such a big deal about they were you know kind of one of the earlier brands to do the vintage reissue divers before vintage reissue was super cool in the last few years yeah they were one of the first brands to do it and um yeah and when you compare pictures to the current one uh the the 2015 model and the ones from you know 1965 it's insane they did it so well so right yeah and it, i mean you they kept the vintage look but they had the modern upgrades and you know a lot of people will give hate on brands that have so many watches in their collection right mm-hmm. I get it and I see that, but I also appreciate, and we've talked about this before with Oris, because they do have so many in their aviation and their diver series, that they have something for everybody. So if you don't like one thing, you have so many more options. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of the way we feel about this watch, because I was not a huge Diver 65 fan. However, we got this watch in and I'm a huge fan of this one. So um, yeah, I'm excited to dig into it today and we're, we're happy that that uh, Timeless sent us this watch to check out. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll put links to Timeless's website. They are a, uh, a retailer in Texas. But I know Timeless, you know, I've, I've been a member of Watch You Seek for quite a while and they are pretty big on the forums and they do lots of articles. And in fact, I think I had put like some want to buy ads out there a long time ago and um, someone from their, their brand reached out and tried to help me find my watch, which was really cool. Yeah. So yeah, we really appreciate them sending the watch in for us to Most check out. Definitely. All right. Are we so, ready to get into Yeah, let's get into the specs a little bit. All right. Specs. So with the Timeless Luxury Diver 65, we have a stainless steel case, but it actually is going to have a bronze bezel, which I I find to be really neat because it's not, I'm still on the fence about how I personally feel about bronze, and I think you are too. Yeah. Um, So I like that it's not too bronzy, so it's kind (laughs) of, yeah. It's not too in your face. It's not. 
Yeah, definitely not. But with the Sit and Still case, so you have a 40 millimeter case size. Again, like really great size. Um, the lug to lug is 47.9 millimeters, and the watch is 13.5 millimeters thick with a 20 millimeter lug space. Yeah. Part of that 13.5 millimeters comes from the bubble sapphire crystal. Um, which you, when if you look at this watch from the side, you can 100% see just how. I don't want to say how bubbly the crystal is, but I can't think of anything else to say. So you could definitely see that that dome shape really, really prominent. So that yeah. definitely sticks up a bit. Um, but it does also have anti-reflective coating, um, but only on the internal side. Yeah. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen on both sides. I agree. I know this is kind of our gripe with or- some of the Oris watches we've had experiences with. I know my pointer date is the same way. Man, it's such a beautiful watch. And in person, you don't really notice it. But when you're trying to take that picture. <laughs> we buy watches just so we can take no, pictures. No, I know. I know. It can be a little bit of a pain. And I mean, honestly, if you're out there and it's really sunny, it can be a little bit distorted trying to read the dial. But right. Um, this one has a really dark dial, so the contrast does help you see it a lot better. Yeah, the dial on this is actually, it's a seaweed green. We yeah. talked to BJ, so he calls it seaweed green, and it makes sense. It does. It um, looks like seaweed. Yeah, it definitely looks like seaweed. What I like about the way that the dial is done is the text is in kind of like this dark mustard yellow color, mm-hmm. and it pairs really nicely with the seaweed green dial. And the, the dial is a gradient dial, so it's going to be lighter in the center, and then it just kind of gets darker right there around the minute track, right before you get into the bezel. And it's a black bezel. Mm-hmm. If somebody told me that, I'd be like, no, this watch is going to be a hot mess. Like green, yellow, and black, <laughs> and bronze, no way. But honestly, like it just works. It works well. I was so impressed when we opened the package. Yeah, so this watch has a 100 meter water resistance. Um, like you said, it's a 44 millimeter case, 47.9 lug to lug, and then it priced at right at $2,200, mm-hmm. which isn't too bad. So Yeah, limited to 100 pieces. Um, has the uh, It comes with both a Tropic rubber strap, which is really comfortable. We've worn it on the rubber strap. Uh, and then it comes with a leather strap as well that has a quick release, super convenient. Um, and has the uh, Oris 733 caliber, which is a uh, base Salita SW200 movement. So mm-hmm. it's just a typical three-hand date, three-hand movement, no date. Yeah, screw down crown on it, mm-hmm. as you would expect with a dive watch. With a dive watch, and um, oh, and there's an option to purchase the bracelet if you want to. I think three hundred fifty dollars, mm-hmm. you can get the bracelet on it, which has an incredible taper on it. Yeah. I love that. Um, the version that we got, we got the brown leather strap and the tropic strap, and they're both wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and they both work, which is very weird. Typically, a work a watch that works with like a brown color won't really necessarily yeah. go with black. It's so crazy how different this watch looked when you had it on the rubber strap, which is how it arrived to us. And then when I popped it on the leather strap, it it's a totally different watch and it just really works very well. And I would have never thought that this watch would have been that versatile, yeah. which we'll get into with our actual questions. <laughs> I'm just going to answer all of our questions right now. Um, and, and, and I will note that this one does not have a, um, a see-through case back. It is a solid case back mm-hmm. with an engraving, Oris engraving and limited edition on the back. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into some of our questions here. Yeah. So if this is your first time listening to one of our watch review episodes, so we basically give you the specs, which you can find on the internet because that's where we found it. Yeah. Um, but so what we like to do is we like to really give our opinions on it. Uh, Kat and I have come up with five questions that we feel really kind of break down how we feel about the watch and different aspects of it um, from a collector standpoint not Mm -hmm. even necessarily from a review standpoint but before we did this we were collectors we were enthusiasts still are overly so um, (laughs) this has not helped that at all Um, but yeah so uh, keep in mind that these are all just our opinions but we want to talk about some things that you know maybe a lot of typical reviews would not talk about in, in giving you know more of an opinion other than facts so, with that being said, our first question yeah. is, what is your favorite and least favorite feature uh, about the Timeless Luxury 65? So, what's your favorite part about this watch, Cat? Okay, so my favorite part about this watch, and I have a feeling we might be in the same boat here, but it's the dial, the green dial. <laughs> you thought that I would list the green dial as You never favorite. know. You never know. You're crossing <laughs> over. Um, so, I picked the dial, and it's just, it's a stunning, stunning green, and Yes, I am a huge fan of green, but I'm also very picky about the kind of greens that I like. And this one has more of a yellow tone to it Mm -hmm. um, versus more of that blue teal color. 
And I just, I really adore it. I love the gradient that they did on it. And I like that when you're in a dark light or if you're in a very shadow light, the dial almost looks black. And yeah. then you go out into the light and you can see that it's green. I love when watches can almost change colors because it makes you feel like you've got, a, I mean, a different watch at times. So I, that is probably my favorite thing about about the piece. What about you? What's your favorite thing? Um, My favorite is not the green dial. So I will say... I, I you don't hate, hate it. it. No. You don't hate which is, it. Which is... <laughs> For me, that's a lot to say about green. I'm not a fan of green, um, but I definitely don't hate it. This is a really great shade of green, honestly. Um, my favorite feature was actually the overall case fit and design. So this was both of our first hands-on experience with the Diver 65, right? Uh-huh. You ha- um, and, and like I said, when you look at 13.5 millimeters thick, I was very skeptical, and I've seen pictures of the side of the case, so I knew that that crystal stuck up very high. Um, it, which isn't something that I'm usually against. I don't mind thickness, but the, the crystal is what kind of made me nervous. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you have it on the wrist, like the, the curvature of the case in general, it sits very comfortably. You don't feel like the crystal's just, you know, sticking it from the watch too much. Um, you don't feel like you're going to knock it on a whole lot. It just has this really nice low profile. And I, I really liked the way that it looked on my wrist and I like the way that it felt on my wrist. Okay. Yeah. I like that. And the green That's a good was okay. Point. So <laughs> I didn't hate it. Uh, <laughs> um, well, but, and so in going back to your point about the dial, um, one of the things, and I'll just be very honest, one of the things that I don't like about traditional Diver 65s is I don't like that on the dial, the loom plots for the markers are a different Fotina, quote mm-hmm. unquote, um, than the ones in the hands. Like that to me drives me insane. And yeah. I feel like once you notice it, you don't unsee it. Like maybe, sorry, I'm about to ruin some people's watches. <laughs> um, it, it's subtle at first, but once you see it, you know that it's there. And this version does not have the Fotina at all. It just has traditional white markers, white hands. Yeah. And I love that about this so much watch. Better. I think it works so well. I think that that's something that I would like to see more from, you know, this line in the future. I think that that it makes a big difference. Completely agree. I was actually super in love with the um, the Hodinkee limited edition they did, but I didn't like the loom. I didn't mm-hmm. like the the Fotina loom that they did. Yeah. On it, it it just looked really fake to me. It looked too. It looked like highlighter yellow, and we probably talked about this on the show too. I think we did. But yeah. they did so well with this one. They kept it just stark white, and it it really pops on that green dial too. Agreed. Yeah, yeah definitely. I love it. Um, okay, so what is your least favorite? Thing <laughs> I always about hate this, this part. I mean, I, and I hate this part because like I, I am going to be honest about things that I don't like. And um, photographing the watch a bit, I noticed that the loom is just not that bright. And this is something that I kind of see across the board with the Oris watches, at least that we've been able to get hands on with. Now, I haven't had experience with your Aquas. I was going to say the Aquas is good. Yeah. And I I haven't had experience with that. But with this Oris Diver 65 with my Oris pointer date, the loom is just not where I want it to be. It's not that bright. And um, it bums me out a little bit because this is considered a dive watch put the 100 you know, meter water resistant to the side. It's still a dive watch, a watch that you can go free diving, snorkeling, swimming with. So I, I just, besides that, it's a sports watch. I just want it to have really bright loom. I, I guess Fair. I am a luminot in some sort of way or fashion. I like loom and um, it, it's there. I'm not going to say it's not, it's not non-existent by any right, means. Right, it is there for It's sure. there, but it's just, it's not, it's not sustainable. It doesn't last. So um, that's, that's my, my gripe with the watch. What about that's you? Fair. I would agree with that. Okay. It's not overly bright. Um, I will say, and I'm wearing the Aquas today. So yeah. You can see it. Um, the, the loom on the Aquas is good, but, and I have noticed that about your loom on your pointer date. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's definitely fair. Miley's favorite is the crystal. I, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the, I don't own a watch that has a bubble crystal um i i've never been an overly big fan about it that being said i respect that this watch has the crystal Mm -hmm. again this is all just personal nitpicking um you know i think that the bubble crystal is very traditional for what the watch was in the 60s so i very much so respect that it kept that um but for me i i've never been a big fan of it because i don't like the the way that it distorts the minute track in certain angles and the markers and this just comes from the fact that I like to take pictures of watches. I buy watches <laughs> just so they look pretty in pictures, apparently. 
Um, yeah, so that I'm not the biggest fan of that. Now, I do like the way that it softens the edges a little bit, but I don't like the way that it distorts them. So, okay. um, yeah, I think that's that's going to be my gripe. Yeah, I can see that. And I mean, it is kind of weird the way it distorts the dial a little bit. Um, but I would say, and I'm not a diver, but I would think that when you are underwater, that's probably going to help you see the dial a little bit better. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not like if you're a diver, I'm write just, into us, DM us, let us know if yeah, that is helpful. Very much so. um, I've never been diving, but um, I would assume that it, it makes it a little bit more legible. And yeah, like you said, it, it keeps with that vintage vibe. My Oars pointer date has that dome crystal, and I, I like it because it adds that vintage look to the watch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think if you're going for that vintage diver, 65 is where it is. If you want something modern, go the Aquas route with Oris oh, especially. Yeah. One, I think the cool thing about the way that Oris does their dive watch collections is there's a dive watch for everybody. Yeah. You know, there's, if you like the vintage style, okay, you go with the, the Diver 65. But then in the Diver 65, there's so many options to choose from. And the same yeah. thing if you want something more modern. And I like that. I like having variety. I yeah. mean, as long as I don't have to choose real fast and I can agonize over picking which one forever. Yeah, I think my only my only other gripe um, that I would say other than the loom was that I would have liked to have seen more than 100 meter water resistant for because this seems like a total like an official dive watch. Granted, you can do a lot with 100 meters. That's that's a lot. That's that's more than enough for 99 right. percent of the people out there. But again, I think it's such a cool looking watch. I would have liked them to see a, a little bit more with with water resistance there. But yeah. That's again, just a personal thing. So going to the next question, yes. how versatile is the watch? All right. So I, out of nowhere, just started doing this in out of 10 answers. So I'm just keeping with that. Yeah. Um, I did it out of 10 too, because I know <laughs> you're doing it. <laughs> I give it a 7 out of 10. Um, so my my thing is, even though it's a dive watch, though how vintage it looks, how truly vintage it looks, kind of makes it a little bit casual and dressy at the same time that was the really cool thing about vintage watches is so many vintage watches really could be they were uh, for a lot of people in the 50s and 60s they were they bought one watch and that was it that one mm -hmm. watch had to be their work watch their going out watch things like that and that design element is true here. This watch you could definitely wear with blue jeans and a t-shirt. You could wear, you know, out to the beach. You can wear, you know, put it on a nice leather strap and wear it to a formal event. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. Um, I think that it just has such a great, uh, a great chameleon effect in that way that it kind of can go with anything. That being said, this particular model, the Timeless Luxury model, having the green dial, it's mm -hmm. definitely going to limit strap options. So that's yeah. kind of where, for me, it hurts a little bit yeah. because I feel like you have to go with safe colors. You have to go with a black, a brown. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't even do like a navy with it or a gray Yeah, I was going to say 7 out of 10 for you is on the lower side of yeah. what you... Yeah, but I mean, I really think with the green, you're very limited on strap options. Mm -hmm. and, and if it weren't for that, and so probably realistically, if we were doing a regular Diver 65, it would be an 8 or a 9 out of 10 for sure because, you know, the traditional dials are going to be more versatile. Um, but for this, like just this particular dial color, and again, for me, I... I like the straps. I want to mix it up. I, I don't like keeping a watch, you know, one way. So that hurts on, on my personal ranking. Okay. Um, what about for you? So I actually ranked this one quite high. I gave it a 9 out of 10. Okay. Um, and the reason was, you know, I, I agree with some of your reasons there. Um, I think this watch is a perfect go anywhere, do anything piece. Um, you know, in fact... The types of watches I usually pick in that category are divers for the most part, mm -hmm. just because I, I like their style. I like that they can be dressed up and dressed down. But I also think that from far away, you can't tell the dial is green. And I've, I've seen this, this watch from across the room, and it's hard to tell unless you're up close. So I think you could get away with it in some of those dressier situations on a black rubber, or I'm sorry, on a black leather or a brown leather strap, or even on the bracelet, you could get it on bracelet and it could go with a lot of stuff. But I think it's very versatile. I, I really like this watch and I would have gave it a 10 out of 10 if it wasn't for the green dial, but I'm, I'm kind of letting it slide by because I think from far away, you, you can't really tell it's green. So I think it would, it would work for sure. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. I, I did forget about the bracelet when I was doing my <laughs> smart rankings, but still, need strap options. 
Um, okay, so our third question that we ask with every Watts review, does it suit its purpose? Does the Diver 65 suit what it was made for? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it's designed to be a dive watch. Again, I'm going to harp a little bit on I wish it had a little bit more water resistant um, to be a, I'm not going to say a true diver, because I, I don't know what the meaning behind that is, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more water resistant. You know, the bright, those bright hour indices, they really changed my opinion on the watch. And I think that it's super legible and that's what you want to see when you're underwater. You want something super bright. And so I, if we had one of the other ones that had that Fotina, I don't think I would feel the same. I feel like this is a really great diver um, mm -hmm. for those that, that want something sporty and that they're going to go diving with it or snorkeling or swimming for sure. Yeah. I, what about you? I agree. I think, you know, yeah, it suits its purpose. Again, uh, increase in water resistance is, a, you know, something that I feel could have happened, but I, I see the point where, okay, it's a hundred meters water resistant and because of the crystal, it's 13 and a half millimeters thick. So if you increase that to 150, 200, or even 300, how much thicker would that have been Yeah. Um, be, with the dome-shaped crystal? So I, I can see that side of it, and in wanting to keep that more vintage appeal, mm -hmm. um, you can't have a big, thick vintage watch. Yeah. Unless you're doing, like, the Omega Pro Prof. Like, <laughs> they have to be smaller and thinner. Um, so I definitely I agree. Yeah, yeah and, and I see your point. I mean, I, I, I like the size of this watch. It's super thin, so I'm not going to – I'm not going to discount that it is only 100 meters because that honestly for me is perfect. I would never need more than that. I'm not a deep sea diver by any means. So I I would, yeah, I would like this watch a lot. Yeah. All right. So next question here. Does the watch provide a fair value for its costs? Okay. I always like, I'm always fascinated by this question because I feel like I have an instinct answer and then I do research and it changes my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but here I do say yes. So this watch is $2,200, mm -hmm. um, you know, First of all, one thing that I was really impressed by, so this is a limited edition watch. That's, there's only a hundred of them that were made. It's still available. There are still a few pieces available of it. Um, but at $2,200, you get a limited edition plus an extra strap. The regular Oris Diver 65 is $2,200 too. So yeah. why wouldn't you want to buy like a limited edition version of it? Yeah. Um, with an extra strap. With an extra strap, Right. Um, and so when I was looking around, I like to compare similar styled watches with the same movement. So when we're looking at the uh, the base movement being the Salita SOE 200, um, so you have the Zen uh, U1 automatic. Um, but it, I mean, it's very different in the fact that it's such a beefy dive watch. So yeah. like it just aesthetically looks very different. Uh, so you don't have as much versatility, um, and it's $1,850. So pretty similar on the lower spectrum. As far as price point, you have a Christopher Ward Trident, um, but it's also not a modified movement. You know, there, there's something to be said about a little bit of a, a more brand specific modified movement. Um, I like the finishing of those movements much better personally. I also be, be also a much larger watch, bigger, beefier, not as much versatility, um, for a much lower price point. Um, I think that where this watch has its most competition is from the Zodiac Seawolf. Yeah. Um, it's a very good, very well done vintage reissue dive watch at $1,100. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, Oris has the bigger name, and, and I respect that. And I'm not saying that they don't do anything that's not worth, uh, you know, double the price. Yeah, the quality of materials is there. The craftsmanship is there. I, I think it's definitely worth its price. What do you think? I think so, too. Um, I agree on all your points. I, For $2,200, personally, I would have liked to seen this watch come on a bracelet. Yeah. That's just me because I know I, I'm wearing a watch right now on my wrist that is less than that comes on a bracelet is a dive watch 300 meter water resistant um so that's just something i would personally want to have with the watch but again you you nail some some great hitters i'm a huge fan of zodiac they come in a little bit less but you know while zodiac's great zodiac uh, to me doesn't have that same vintage appeal like this oris yeah. does so um again it, you know Everyone has their own price point. They're going to set whatever their price is. And I think you made a great point that you can get this limited edition watch with an extra strap for the same price you can get a normal Diver 65. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot goes into pricing, but um, again, I, I gave it like I kind of scored it an 8 out of 10 as well. I mean, I know we're not really scoring this this question, but I think it is pretty fair. I just would have liked to seen it with a bracelet. You put it on a bracelet, you make me happy with, at that price point. Yeah. So yeah. Very fair. Okay. Um, okay. So last question. Um, would 
the Timeless Luxury or Diver 65 get regular wear in your collection? I think so. Yeah. I think so because it's different than anything else I have. And yeah, I think I'd wear the heck out of it. Yeah, I agree. It looks good. Like it looks great on leather. Looks incredible on the black rubber tropic strap that it comes on. If I bought this watch, I probably would would fork out the extra 350 for the bracelet because they do a bracelet that has an incredible taper to it Mm -hmm. and I'm just in love with it so yeah what about you yeah no I I totally agree I think it's different without being too different um you know it's kind of like a safe way to do something different the dial like you said it's so dark it's not this is my thing with green is I think that I I'm I like the more subtle colors of green um, you know, something like a Hulk green or a Kermit green, that's, that's a lot of green. Okay. <laughs> like I'm baby stepping my way into green. Um, but it, it's subtle. Um, and even the bronze, like, I feel like this watch would have been totally different. would have been a miss without the, the bronze bezel. I think there's something about it. It all, like all of these components individually, I would hate but when you put them all together, for whatever reason, it genuinely works. Um, and it looks very good. And it looks totally different than anything else that either of us have. So, Absolutely. For sure. Um, yeah. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, so I love this watch. I really do. And, it, and that's saying a lot because, honestly, I've never been a huge Diver 65 fan up until now. Up until I got to be hands-on with this piece. And the way that Oris put together, you know, the mid-case, the bezel, the crystal. And it's... You know, it comes under 13 millimeters thick and it's, it wears incredibly thin. Like I'm just shocked on how thin it feels. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's just kind of hidden by that crystal that like it or hate it, it's there, but it helps the watch wear so well on the wrist. And, um, you know, Oris, they also, they're not one to shy away from colors. I love that about them. They worked with Timeless to get this, this green just right. And it just really works. Again, I'm, I'm very picky about my greens and, um, yeah, they did a great job. Yeah. You know, the mid case also, and the way the, the lugs curve down on this watch, the lugs curve down on my Oris pointer date and it wears so well on the wrist. And I think they just, it's 40 millimeters. And and some people think that might be a little bit big. I certainly don't, but I think anybody like smaller wrist people can, can wear this watch. Yeah. Easily. So easily. Like it just looks good. It looks good on many different size wrists. But yeah, and I think, you know, with the two tone with the, you know, the the bronze bezel on it, I think this is a two tone watch for those that aren't two tone people. Yeah. Like if you want a little funk, but you don't want to go full out, right? You're a little a little hesitant about how how about, bronze is going to work. Yeah. I think having just the bezel, it, it's just a really really nice touch. Yeah. So what what are your overall thoughts? Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think I like the idea of two-tone, but I don't feel like, I feel like he has to have a certain personality for two-tone, you know, and I'm just not quite there yet. Um, (laughs) Goals, one day, I'm just going to pull up with a solid gold, you know, some big whatever, um, Rainbow Daytona, but um, I'm not there yet in my personality. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> needs to be there but I think it, it's a phenomenal piece I, one thing that I, I did m- mean to mention when we were talking about the dial oh so the applied indices have also been plated with bronze on the outside so it matches the little bit of the bezel because when you look at it the bezel it's not over the top you don't notice it initially they won't patina though will they? but it ties in I don't think so see I thought they were like rose gold Mm-mm, they're bronze they're bronze too yeah okay um, but yeah, it, it's just, it will be interesting to see how this does patina over time. Um, but same, I do really like this watch. I thought it, it kind of changed my mind on the Diver 65 and I'm definitely more open to checking out more of the Diver 65 series. Yeah. Um, you know, it was something that I've never really considered in store because I'm not a fan of vintage reissues all that much. Uh, but definitely this is something I feel like it, it seems like it could be vintage or it could be modern. And, and I really appreciate that. So this one, I liked it. Yeah, I did too. Sad to send it away. I'm not going to buy this one though. Dang it. <laughs> I can't keep buying all the watches. Um, no, but we uh, we want to thank, uh, before, you know, just kind of wrapping things up. We want to thank Timeless Luxury uh, for sending this out to us. Like Kat said, we'll have a link to their website in the show notes. Um, you know, follow them on Instagram. They do some really cool things. Uh, this is not the first limited edition watch that they've done either they have done a few limited editions in the past as well so uh thank you to the guys over at timeless luxury and to vj over at worse yeah 
I think that wraps us up for today. Does that wrap us up? Okay. So thank you guys for tuning in for today. We really appreciate it. Um, make sure we talked about this before. Um, we're starting to kind of build back up our website and we really enjoy the idea of articles, but Kat and I do this all by ourselves, y'all. So, um, <laughs> you know, we like to pretend that we have a personal life. We really don't. Um, so if you, but, and also we like the ideas that people send in and we like different perspectives. So if you have an idea for an article, something that you've been thinking about, if you enjoy writing, or if you got a new watch and you want to do a review on it, or if you have a cool story, send it into us, send it to info at 10 and two.com. That's T E N N. Um, and send, send it on ever to us. We'll check it out. We'll get back in touch with you and see about putting it on our website. Also, if you're enjoying what you're hearing, make sure that you leave us a review on iTunes. Give us the stars, five stars only. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> just got to throw that out there. Um, no, if you enjoy what you hear, definitely, you know, at least leave us uh, a ranking, write a review. It just helps more people find the podcast easier. Um, so and we appreciate, like, yeah. we appreciate getting reviews. I mean, we read all the reviews. Y'all we do. Know know like we like how feedback. much we geek out over every like every review every nice email we screenshot it before the other person can see it and text it and we geek out about it we absolutely love it we're so humbled by all of the support um but it does it also helps us out um so definitely do that and also never you know don't hesitate to ever send us a dm or an email with any suggestions or anything like that like we we do read everything um and we really appreciate the feedback so do that and then make sure you are following us over on all of our social media at 10 and 2 media t-e-n-n on instagram facebook and twitter go to our website interact with us there but we're doing youtube videos soon 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 <laughs> we're not committing to a date um so go over to our youtube channel which is 10 and 2 so t-e-n-n and 2 um, go ahead and get subscribed, turn on your notifications. We do just kind of randomly post the podcast up there, but just go ahead and get subscribed to it because we will have a video coming out soon and we plan on doing them f- regularly ish for a while. We'll yeah, see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and get subscribed to us. Follow us there. And I think that is it. That's it. All right, guys. Well, until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye y'all. Bye.